So guys, we're gonna have the recording of this. webinar we're gonna talk about crypto economy and blockchain because we are now in the year 2020 2020 where our product crypto unit will be available to anyone through crypto exchanges and we need to be ready for that today we're gonna have the so-called basic webinar the inception webinar my name is Maria Antonienka. I have been working for 23 years as the financial CEO in the major companies. I worked also in a company selling um, gas and electric equipment and also I worked in the uh, gas industry and it was also my duty to make plans and count money. And when cryptocurrency set in i decided that i need to understand it so i went to the advanced training courses in uh, the moscow state university of international relations and there was very valuable information provided there were speakers from microsoft from the united states and they provided information on blockchain and crypto economy it was a review uh, of uh, how cryptocurrency is treated in different countries. So it was important to understand how this phenomenon is perceived in different countries. And today I'm going to give you just a little part of that information. And every Thursday, I'm going to give you some additional information related to our token CRU crypto unit and some basic knowledge on blockchain. So for you to understand what blockchain is and what cryptocurrency is and um, everything related to cryptocurrency and blockchain, we need to separate it into, do, into two uh, notions like the bank and the money. So money is issued by the central bank but they circulate among different banks. And the word, word blockchain and cryptocurrency are two different things. Guys, uh, for some of you, the volume is okay. So I, need, I think you need to turn the volume up because the mic is quite close here. So they can, uh, so cryptocurrency, the information, uh, the notion of distributed ledgers is not a new notion. A lot of major dis um, corporations use that technology, which is keeping, storing information, encrypted information on different devices or in different storage media. Why this problem became so relevant? Because when hackers attack a server or the main server of a bank, or a company and if all the information is stored on one computer it's very dangerous if you remember there was a film called uh, die hard 4 uh, as usual bruce, bruce willis saves the entire planet but in that movie hackers got into the uh, vaults of the federal reserve system of the united states the united states which kept all uh, the data of the um, citizens' accounts in the banks. As you can see on the left, it's the settlement or the um, uh, central bank. And if the hackers gain access to this server, to the central bank, they can steal all the money kept in that bank on different accounts from their rightful owners what other uh, uh, downsides um, storing all money or storing all information or money in one uh, system uh, are so there was a bank which had his license revoked by the bank that bank had double accounting double book entries they were fraudsters and in order uh, for the CEO not to get into prison, they started a fire. And all the information burned down. The server, 
papers, everything burned down. They covered it up, like all their um, illegal activities. And uh, who were to suffer? People were to suffer, those who kept their money. And the bank uh, accounts were not insured because the deposits were not insured. So as you can see, by destroying one central mainframe, central computer in the bank, uh, the owners, the CEOs, the management, the top managers of the bank were scot free. They did not, so they were not prosecuted because there was no evidence. And you can see the centralized system is very vulnerable, and the centralized system prevents um, those vulnerabilities. So just imagine we have 116 uh, participants in the Russian room. And imagine that we agree that all of you on your home PC downloads a register of the same data. So just imagine that we've agreed today and we're going to download on our computers, not necessarily information about money. Uh, it can be a poem, a, um, a book, some famous book like Harry Potter. And all of us will have the same number of pages in the book, the same number of letters in the book. And if all of a sudden, now we have 120 participants, but we've agreed, we 116 agreed that we have the same copy of Harry Potter. And let's say 117th participants say, I have a different book. My book is the original and your book is a copy, but we 160, 16 participants know that we downloaded the original book. And if the copy that the 117th participant has does not match our copy, then his copy is a fake, not our copy. We 116 participants, which have the same information are so-called validating nodes. We can prove that this is truth. What is on our register ledger, which is which what is not in our ledger ledger, which is not in our system blockchain, it's a lie. You cannot manipulate data in blockchain, make a double entry like uh, one of our Russian banks when they kept their books. Blockchain is completely transparent. It shows all the transactions and it stores information multiple times. And today many companies want their information to be kept in different places in order to avoid data loss. So that's what blockchain technology is all about because it is not, blockchain should not necessarily be used to store information about money or cryptocurrency. You can keep a register of the owners of the real estate in blockchain. In Russia, there is a uh, extensive program being rolled out. And I think uh, other countries have it too, to move to blockchain all real estate items. Why do we need it? In order to prevent fraud with the sale of real estate, if a person took a mortgage, with a collateral, with his apartment as a collateral. So when the credit is fully paid, so that the collateral, the mortgage, would be unencumbered, would be released from uh, encumbrance by default. Let me tell you from my experience, we had a mortgage in my family. And when we paid it early in advance, it turned out that the mortgage for my apartment was in China. The document itself, the paper was in China, the assessment of the apartment. Our Russian bank resold my credit to another bank. And then that second bank resold the credit to a Chinese bank. And when I redeemed my credit ahead of time in my Russian bank, it took them three months to find my collateral paper in order to physically move it back to Russia and then give it back to me to show that my apartment is not encumbered anymore. So if the mortgage 
register or ledger is moved to blockchain, then the release from encumbrance will be uh, implemented through blockchain. So as soon as you pay your credit, the flat is, uh, or the apartment is not encumbered anymore, encumbered anymore. So it's not only about the movement of money. Guys, the slides are the ones that you see. I mean, uh, I guess the letters inside the pictures were not uh, editable. So what is crypto eco economics? So crypto economics, I, I think, was born with the birth of Bitcoin when the derivative unit of that technology came up from the blockchain technology. And today in the crypto economy, we have both exchanges and owners of cryptocurrencies and insurance companies and hedge funds which invest their money in crypto currencies and miners as well. We're talking about huge shops, factories, which mine and produce Bitcoins. Like 50% of the entire mining capacities are located in China. It's like an element, it's the way of keeping your money. Someone keeps their money in Bitcoin, in Ethereum, someone makes a profit out of it. And as of today, the producers of mining equipment also make very good money. It's like the time of golden rush you know when people uh someone went to mine gold and someone sold shovels you know and the sellers of shovels also always made money regardless whether the uh, prospectors found gold or not so the seller of the shovel always uh, turns a profit right so the capitalization of just bitcoin uh, equals $157 billion and the income of mining companies per year is more than $4 billion. The income of crypto exchanges per year is also more than $5 billion. And annually, money is collected or raised through crowdfunding system, which back in the day was quite a popular movement. I area ICO every year through that ICO system around $2 billion are raised. And compared to stock market, cryptocurrency market is very small. Let me give you another example. One company such as Facebook in the stock market is evaluated at $80 billion, $800 billion while the entire market of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, equals only $300 billion. So you can see the entire market of cryptocurrencies is two times smaller than Facebook alone. Can you just imagine what stock market is? They have trillions of dollars there. And of course, our company, this year, 2020, we are moving towards the domain of cryptocurrencies because they are more easier to regulate than and manage than, than stock market. We're using this instrument, the entry to the blockchain and cryptocurrency exchanges as an intermediate stage. We do not want to be crypto token forever. In future, we would like to move on to stock market like stocks that will be traded in major exchanges like Nasdaq, New York Stock Exchange. But we can do it only three year, in three years at least. And our company needs to show a profit from operations for three years in order to be able to apply for an IPO. Whereas it is much easier to apply for an STO. I'm going to explain it to you. Just some background. Uh, I'm sorry for the fonts, for the letters, they are quite small. Some uh, dates are mixed up as well, not 09, 01, 200, 2009. They say that the crypto market uh, value is 231 billion. 
because the Bitcoin went down. As soon as the Bitcoin goes up by $500, the value will be $300 billion. But Facebook's value is $800 billion. I just gave you um, like an, an idea. I guess maybe Facebook costs more too. Uh, but in um, December, the stock market uh, showed a decline and uh, that's why the capitalization decreased as well. So thank you for your uh, input, guys, in the chat. So we had a gradual development. At first, Bitcoin came up, uh, yes, on, uh, in September 2009. Then the first exchanges appeared and the renowned Intego uh, stock exchange which was ha which was hacked by uh, hackers and i guess for eight years now those uh, stolen bitcoins were found from uh, that exchange and in japan they had a trial for the return of bitcoins to their original owners the bitcoins that were found by law enforcement officers and many first investors into Bitcoin were not happy because the exchange rate was fixed um, and the money was returned to them in dollars, not in Bitcoins. And they asked for Bitcoins to be returned. But the US uh, government sold the confiscated uh, Bitcoins at the current prices in the exchange. Some of them were sold from the drug dealers as well. So today the government learned how to control the movement of bitcoins how to find bad guys who do some fraud fraud with those with that money because we because of the blockchain all the transactions are transparent and you can track them all the first mining device for mining bitcoin appeared in 2011 remember like those uh, sellers of shovels in the gold rush times at first, they dug uh, with a small shovel and then uh, bulldozers and excavators appeared. Like similarly, the first Bitcoins were mined on home PCs and then more powerful machines came up which mined uh, Bitcoin. And uh, starting from 2012, this topic became quite popular and new cryptocurrencies appear, cripple payment system, although it's not purely cryptocurrency, it was launched as a um, analog of SWIFT transfers so that banks could pay less for SWIFT transfers, but it was not widely implemented in the banking sector because of some scandals. As I told you before, Silk Road, a uh, salesperson of drugs by Bitcoin, the owner was Ross Williams, found when the FBA agents for two years searched and monitored all the transactions on his website. And at some point, they got him caught and put in prison. In 2013, there is the buttering on the stage with this Ethereum and then based on Ethereum, there are new cryptocurrencies emerged. Today we say that 2020 and all this history of cryptocurrencies is very short, only seven years. And there are a lot of non-civilized manifestations like the Wild West. The first who came put some pillar and the land plot is his or hers. But today, more and more, this market is state regulated and a lot of documents have been adopted that regulate the transactions, the circulation and the performance and operations of the exchanges, of the companies, but not in every country this regulation is in place. And yes, these slides are a bit outdated. If we have some professionals 
who will help us to prepare updated slides for the next webinar. I will appreciate it a lot. And this slide shows uh, an, an example that within eight months, the Binance exchange became the largest in the world. Within eight months from middle of 2017 till March of 2018, Binance became the largest exchange in the world. So this niche is open, is not covered, and entrepreneurs offering a larger range of services, they can become the first in the market because the competition is quite low and the income of Binance in the first quarter of 2018 amounted to over 1 million euro, which was higher than the Deutsche Bank revenues. And this is what the new market offers. It offers new opportunities, as you see. Over 300 enterprises are members of the Ethereum Alliance and the letters are very small, but you can see these green circles, uh, British Petroleum, JP Morgan. What do all these large companies do in Ethereum Alliance? Yes, they do create their own uh, apps on blockchain, their smart contracts. British Petroleum, for example, detects movement of oil, crude oil, from the exploration sites to the supply market to avoid any theft. So a lot of companies use the resource provided by the Ethereum-based blockchain. They may rewrite something and customize it, but this is the largest community and the largest alliance today related or associated with some blockchain solutions or blockchain-based apps. The Microsoft, Microsoft developed uh, Microsoft Azure. It's an app. This is soft blockchainization and uh, light location of smart contracts, launch of smart contracts for different sectors. But we in Russia so far are far away from these distributed system. We quite recently only learned to purchase windows by paying a fee because before that we were used to hacking and Microsoft Azure was initiated by Microsoft and actually the goal is that a person by paying five US dollars will download as Windows to his PC, this cloud, this open cloud, where he or she can locate blockchain, some pledges, mortgages, agreements, contracts, to make sure that it is light infrastructure for users of smart contracts in particular. Well, in terms of different countries and how they treat cryptocurrencies. Well, what you see on this map colored in green, these are those countries which already know how to regulate different cryptocurrencies or tokens as we call them. In the US, for instance, they say that they treat cryptocurrency as similar to shares. Token securities are similar to shares in accordance with the views of the Commission on Securities of the US. They say they will not set up a special department to regulate cryptocurrencies. We have our Securities Commission. Why this commission will regulate the cryptocurrency market there? Because cryptocurrency has some properties of a share. It is either a way to preserve the capital and multiply it, like in case of a Bitcoin. Today, it used to be eight US dollars. The cost was eight US dollars, whereas today it is $10,000. So it acts as a security because you can multiply your capital and you can also trade and make some earning 
uh, and there are a lot of entrepreneurs who disagree with this stance that cryptocurrency is not a share, it's something different. But in the US, they say, well, everything is fine. So our securities commission. The other countries such as Switzerland, they actually separated the cryptocurrency regulation as a separate area of regulation. Yes, the same agency issues some permits or authorizations similar uh, to the national bank in our country. So the regulator, which issues some licenses related to the money flow, but this is a, toporate, a separate agency, a separate standalone uh, department with the experts who know quite a lot about what blockchain is, cryptocurrencies are. And uh, in case of a company comes to a bank for a banking license or to the permit to issue this or that token. So the procedure of regulation is much simpler there. In the world, there are a number of countries that say that cryptocurrency is money. One of the first was Japan, that in July 2017, if I'm not mistaken, acknowledged that they uh, treat Bitcoin as a means of payment. So Bitcoin, they didn't treat all the other currencies, but only Bitcoin. Switzerland say, we know how to regulate, we will separate. There are currencies with the status of, uh, of shares, securities, token securities. There are cryptocurrencies, which are used as a means of payment for uh, services and goods, token utility, and there is token commodity as well. And you can exchange this token commodity into some uh, goods, commodities, and there is a stable token equal to money. In order to issue USDT, stable coin, you need to open an account in a bank, credit the relevant amount in euro or dollars, and only for this amount, you can issue your stable coins token. And in many countries, the government still observe the situation. There are countries that say, yes, we know what to do. And they attract a lot of investors. And Switzerland was one of the first to create the cryptocurrency valley in Zud, it's a town. And in the first year after the publication of the first law in Switzerland that specify that they receive and have a positive stance towards the cryptocurrencies, the inflow of investments into this region actually outperform all those uh, amounts before the Second World War, where the money of military Reich and all the participating countries tended to deposit their money in their banks, in the banks of Switzerland. And therefore this one law actually led to a huge inflow of investments and money. In our country, in Belarus, Belarus in 2017 accepted or adopted Bitcoin and ICO. And at least we have some kind of law on cryptocurrencies. And thanks to this law, the Belarusian exchange is operational, which trade in dig digital assets. So this exchange has the digital oil, digital gold index indi indicators of different uh, exchanges such as Dow Jones, S&P 500 in the digital format. Even it has a digitalized bonds, sovereign bonds, digitalized sovereign bond, bonds. So this is the, these are the effects of, for this country. As soon as the country adopts some laws, there is, it, it leads to the development. I cannot say the same thing about Russia. On the 28th of March, 2018, the law was, uh, the, the draft law was published. 
there was the first hearing, the second hearing in May, then the third hearing, the government has been changed in Russia, but there is still no law on cryptocurrencies in Russia. And unless we have this law, many people think that cryptocurrency is prohibited. Unless there is no law, it means it is prohibited. But actually, it's not this way. If we don't have a law, what is not prohibited by law, it is allowed. There is no direct ban. A person who gets his salary either in Russian rubles, in Indian rupees, euro, dollars, he can buy anything he likes. He can buy a flight in air tube or the air balloon flights. So there are no special regulations for air tubing, but no one actually bans us to feel this joy of flying there. And the same applies to cryptocurrencies. You can buy everything you like. Whereas to sell something and get cryptocurrency, you can't do it. There is this separation line. If, for example, you want in the currency, in the country, where cryptocurrencies are not covered by the law to sell an apartment by getting bitcoins or a car to get a payment in bitcoins because it will be viewed as something fake. But in those countries where bitcoin is acknowledged as a means of payment, like in Switzerland, Japan or Germany, we will come to the example of Germany a bit later in a few seconds. Yes, Germany. On the 28th of February 2018, they adopted a document issued by the Ministry of Finance of Germany. They published this document, which specify that they recognize Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as a means of payment. So uh, Germany treat Bitcoin as money, not as the commodity. And this document actually means if you exchange Bitcoin into Euro and vice versa, you don't pay any tax, VAT or anything else. It's equal to any exchange in foreign currencies. When we go abroad, so a person who gets his salary in dollars, if people living in Russia or India would go to the USA, they need to come to the exchange point and buy US dollars and then take these uh, dollars to, with them to go to the US. And when we exchange our Russian rubles to euro or to dollars, no one actually mm, charge a tax. And the same, the same applies to Germany. And when are taxes charged? So, if an enterprise sells something and gets Bitcoin, for instance, pizza, de pizza de delivery or sales of fridges. So an entrepreneur may say, I know there are a lot of people having Bitcoin and uh, they would like uh, to buy my products by using cryptocurrencies. I can put an advertisement somewhere that I accept Bitcoins, but under the law, this entrepreneur should actually register this transaction in the current exchange rate of euro and indicate which exchange he used. So, and then uh, he shall report it in his accounting books. So they need to specify that we calculate the exchange rate of uh, Bitcoin at this rate and fix all the payments uh, at this exchange rate and then the taxes will be paid in euro but as regards gp morgan there is another good document issued we will do our best to share a link in the chat for you to download this document it has over 70 pages this is the abc book the abc textbook for first-time readers, for first-year pupils who want to learn what blockchain and cryptocurrencies are. This stuff of, of GP Morgan 
spent two years to bring into one book, ABC book, all the terminology. And uh, page 69 includes proposals to create the federal coin of the USA. So that meaning that the cryptocurrencies are freely circulated around the globe, but the Federal Reserve doesn't have it two years past, but a uh, federal coin didn't emerge yet, but the proposal was made in this book, in this manual. And another outdated slide for 2017, boom ICO. This is the year of the ICO boom and uh, nine out of 10 coins which were offered on the market, on the exchange, they turned into scam or they were fraud. And if you open the observer, there are over 1000 tokens, which today no one needs actually. And there are such tokens which exchanges actually reject. They offered them in due time, but there is no trading in these tokens and no circulation. And we get from Binance Exchange uh, some emails that this token, this type of token will be delisted because exchange doesn't need it. Uh, it needs some maintenance, administration, some wallets. The uh, currency pairs are to be maintained. If it is uh, not uh, feasible, but actually the exchange earns, makes its earning on the commission, then it should be delisted. Well, STO is another phenomenon, which is even uh, more younger than the crypto economics is. In case of crypto economics, it is five, seven years of age, but ICO was boomed in 2017, whereas STO is a new trend in cryptocurrency sector, security token offer. These are the companies which do STO, they do it through a regulator, not to raise some money, and to hide. So they are publicly open, transparent, legal, and regulated by those regulators responsible for the regulation of cryptocurrency. Well, and I analyzed the year of 2019, there was 89 projects launched with security tokens involved. People are asking the question that crew is a future token, but we are gonna come to that. Don't worry. We're talking security tokens. Let's go back to our security tokens here. Oh, imagine that a security is a security officer in a supermarket or in the bank. And you see there's a guy in black with orange letters, security. That's what our guys, well, that's what comes to our people first in mind, right? When they hear security. Yes, it's about ensuring security, security of assets, security of value. So security token are like um, a share, a security, a stock. So 89 projects were launched. Of course, most of those projects were launched in the United States, 25 of them. The total capital, the total amount of money raised for those 25 projects was $186 million, $0.8 million. Some of them were launched in the Cayman Islands, seven proj uh, projects, 25 million in Liechtenstein, Singapore, and 10 projects in Germany. For Germany, it's quite a big number of projects. Switzerland, 10, and Germany, 10. Again, 
I would like to repeat myself. As soon as the law was adopted, which legalized cryptocurrency, a lot of activity was shown in the market. So the total amount of money raised within those projects was 267 million. Well, here again, the font is very small. The letters are very small, but we are going to send the slides to all of you guys in all the chats. So the blue segment in our pie diagram are tokens issued through the Security Commission of the United States. It's the highest amount of money raised was in the United States. Of course, the regulation system was the American one and Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Singapore and Germany as well here. So, so this scale diagram shows you in which industries those security tokens were issued in, last, in the last year where they were going to be used. And you see the longest line here, it's financial sector. Mainly all the projects that were implemented offered a financial service or financial services. It's like the receipt of dividend income from the rent of real estate. As to point, there was this project uh, very luxurious um, real estate in Aspen. Uh, very rich people go there and this resort area for 130 rooms, they issued their uh, cryptocurrency backed by assets saying that the owners of those um, uh, coins would receive uh, tokens, would receive an, a dividend from the rent of the real estate. A lot of projects are also related to blockchain itself. It's the third line. Someone raised money for the development of an application. And uh, the reason why they followed the security token is that they promised an income from the implementation of their project. And the platforms that maintain or service the STO, which is Security Times, they had 11, Securitize, 11 projects were issued. Now we're talking with Polymath, they have only three projects launched by themselves as of now, but they are more prone to negotiations. Dean is asking why crew was made as a crypto system if we could go to the stock market. In the very beginning of my webinar, I told you, in order to go to the stock market, the company needs to show a profit in their accounting books from their main operations, main operational activity. Our fund is a fund of venture investments. And the main activity from basalt and gold does not yield, yet yield a big income. It's our financial investment. As a financial director, I can tell you, as of now, it's a liability in our books because we invested money in it. But when they start yielding an income and we have an asset, then we can go. It goes to the left side of the book. Then we can go to the stock market and show an income from our main activity in the projects that we invested. In three years, it's gonna happen. In what platforms those STOs were um, issued? 70% Ethereum, 6% Stellar, 3% in some other platforms, not quite yet clear, maybe under development, and also Iroha, Iroha Hyperledger, it's seven or 11 banks united to create this blockchain, but it is considered to be a closed blockchain. Only seven banks have access to those nodes, but I might be mistaken. It's according to the information that, have, that is available to me. 47 projects were launched based on ERC-20 
standards. Five projects. DS protocol. Unfortunately, I'm not a programmer and I don't know what's the difference between the two. There is a protocol ST20. Four projects were launched with that protocol and the main five top, which T0, five top projects T0, Blockstack, 22X Fund, Enercom, and Asper Coin. It's the real estate in Aspen. They raised uh, $18 million by issuing their coins. Tezero has 134 million because it's a conglomeration of five projects inside one project. And why we followed our way. At first, we issued our crypto unit on Ethereum platform. As you could see, Ethereum and Alliance uh, is the um, biggest crypto community. They have more than 300 companies. It's easy integration through Ethereum blockchain into other companies, other exchanges. Well, practically all crypto economy is based on Ethereum. Yes, Ethereum is slow. That's what we faced when we did the synchronization of our back offices. And um, guys, if you missed the news by Andrei Fyodorovich, Andrei Havratov on the 15th of January that we did enter blockchain, we have one uh, issues issuing center and that's where we put 80 billion our crypto unit tokens. And second address in the Ethereum observer, it's the depository, a register. And I'll try to find the link for you and post it in the chat. I'm not sure whether I'm doing it correctly. I'll try to copy paste it to you guys, but any ICO in use? But you can uh, try and look in the chats uh, yourselves. In where 80 billion, that's the issue center. We put it there and no one can add anything there. And the second addre address in the Ethereum is the depository. So, Redmi, I, caught, I asked your question in the chat, let's see. So someone has 12 crypto units. So Maxime, thank you. Let me copy paste it. So if he has in Ethereum, uh, blockchain also 12 crew. Those who have 400,000 crew, they will have 400,000 in blockchain. So we're now synchronizing the back offices with the data on blockchain. Where we're we doing it? We now have 465,000 users. That's quite a lot. So the first wave of synchronization took us several days. And if you, if we moved later, I guess it would take us half a year to synchronize. So the primary registers have been migrated to blockchain. And we chose Ethereum because there are a lot of programmers there, a lot of ready to use solutions and the year 2020 is going to be quite interesting for all of us. In parallel, we are going to have a contest among developers, teams like Tokenize, Polymess, and other teams who already did their own blockchain. And we're going to create our own blockchain because we're gonna have our own, uh, we ha have our own community. We have in more than, uh, what, 50 countries around the world and we can make a decentralized network spread across the entire world, very sustainable and resistant in order not to be affected by the all other 
coins. So all our money will stay within our system. So our company will definitely develop its own blockchain. And to, for now, today, it's step one that we've moved to Ethereum blockchain. Why we did it? When we go to the regulators and ask the permission to place our token on an exchange and without putting into it into blockchain, it's not a token, it's just a package of paper. But when we have the statistics, when we have at least 465,000 transactions, and it's quite a lot, believe you me, and every week we'll have more and more synchronization, when you go today to your back office and uh, click on the certificate account where you have your certificate to your crypto units, and that's where you can order a paper certificate or you can go to blockchain, to the depository, and see your entry there. If tomorrow you buy an additional EIP and get additional crypto units, then one week later, when the weekly synchronization takes place, in your account, in your depository, the number of crypto units will increase. And this will be the proof for the regulators it's going to protect our database. Remember, Andrei Havratov told us that we do not want to give away our client database. We will show our blockchain. Those are our clients. Those are our tokens. It's all done for our security. Someone was asking for the translation of slides into English, but I guess, guys, that uh, they should be in English, right? But maybe it's an old question. So that's why I put the text uh, on the slide so that would be easier for the translators and for you that the SDO market over the last year is mainly the market of IT companies, those were the projects from IT companies, the developments of blockchain solutions, and very few projects were from the real sector of economy. Yeah, but you know, some of the um, letters, some of the words were not translated, so you know. So there was just a few projects like Aspen Coin, which was backed by real assets, but usually it's like e-wallets, uh, tokens, something that you cannot really touch. Our global investment portfolio, uh, in our global investment portfolio, we do invest in the real sector of economy. We have basalt produ producing facilities, sushi master restaurants, uh, real estate in Thailand. And our portfolio will be backed by assets. We'll have assets and we're going to use them to back our tokens. We're now negotiating with the evaluation companies during the last webinar. They asked me, how our assets are proved in our portfolio. At the moment, the confirmation is our costs. If we paid for the Sushi Master franchise, let's say $100,000, this is our investments. If we pay for the construction of a bezel producing factory, $1 million, those are our investments. It's called the actual cost method. And our portfolio can be evaluated based on our costs, on our invest, financial investments. But what the financial evaluation company does, they evaluate the future of your investments, the potential income that your investments can yield. Let me give you a good example. A lot of you guys were in Techno Park in Marina Gorka in Minsk. And imagine that five years ago, it was just a bare piece of land, nothing on it, waste. And maybe there was a road and a couple of electrical pillars. So what was the price of that land five years ago? Peanuts, very little. Then five years passed and now we have a test field there 
for the certification of new transportation, Techno Park, and it costs millions of dollars now. Similar, similarly, our real estate in Phuket. Yes, we have a land plot there, which costs not much today, like, I don't know, one million and a half, two million dollars. It's a bare land. There is a motor road, electricity uh, supply lines, but we have a project. The design of the hotel, how the villas are going to be located, and the project design was given to you during the reporting webinar. And the evaluation company will not look at that land and see it simply as land. They will see that in the adjacent territories, close to the road, on the other side of the road, I was there. That's why I'm like telling you like this. I saw it with my own eyes. In the neighboring plot, in the neighboring area, a foreign owner, I think he was a Canadian or a Switzerland, Swiss guy, he built villas already there. And every villa is sold at $1,200,000. So if on your neighboring territory, 70% is already sold, one of the owners of a villa is our Russian tennis player, the Wimbledon winner, Kafilnikov. So he, I guess he used the prize money, the prize money to buy himself a villa for a million dollars. So since this real estate on the neighboring territory is already sold $1 million per each villa, villa, then the evaluation company will count the number of villas that we're going to build and will give us a prospective price. They say, today you bought this land at $1 million and a half. In two years, when you're gonna build your hotels, this entire complex will cost $30 million. And this document, the evaluation certificate, will be used as a basis for our portfolio. So the value of our portfolio will increase several fold because we are going to be certified and evaluated by evaluation companies. And when we're done with it, and when we finish it, then we are going to go to the regulators to ask their permission to enter the exchange because our crypto unit token as a security token will be confirmed not only by actual costs, but also by the results of an ev evaluation performed by the evaluation company. I think it's gonna, going to take us two months, uh, February and March, for the evaluation company to come with their opinion conclusion. And as soon as we receive the evaluation report, which will be used to um, back our portfolio, then we go in to enter the exchange. Another question people asked me, who else is going to need our token except us? Only we know about it, right? Well, the exchange entry system is going to be regulated. Let's do some, crunch some numbers. Our people now have 28 billion crew tokens. The company will allow the sale in the exchange only of 1% of all tokens owned by people. So let's take 28 billion. Let's take 1% from that amount and, and we get 2.8 uh, million tokens or billion tokens that will go into the exchange. If the price is $1, then it's gonna be only $2 million. If the price is lower, then it's 10%, 10, uh, 10 cents or 20 cents, but $280,000 is really small amount. And the market will simply swallow those tokens and they won't even, their price even won't have time to decrease because the system itself uh, works in such a way when the exchange promotes a new token because the exchange wants to earn on the commission fees. Because usually that's not how listing is performed like all 
um, without any advertising, uh, everything is done silent. Not, no, that's not how it does. Two months at least prior to the beginning of the sales, an advertising campaign is, con is conducted by the exchange for the potential buyers to familiarize with the value of the new tokens. Of course, everyone, everyone wants to, to have it happened yesterday, but it's better to move slowly, but in a quality manner, steadily, you know, step by step. As, it's, as they say, slowly does it, right? So we don't want our token's price decrease we want to we want it to increase every day every month and for us to be really glad that we are building our new blockchain and new economic model of assets management and education we bring people education as well and the value of our company is that we want people to be financially literate So here we have the stages, they can change. So the first stage we did on the 15th of January, the synchronization of tokens with uh, the data on blockchain with the data in the back office. And the second stage will be to ensure the possibility within 1% of the P2P transfers, like person-to-person -person or peer-to-peer -peer transfers. It's not going to be exchange per se. It's going to be like um, bank transfers, you know, in between relatives or friends, like, for example, or our internal interchange system. Since, uh, systems. I can say, like, look, uh, transfer 10,000 to my bank account in Alpha Bank, and I will transfer 10,000 to your account in uh, Sberbank because I don't want to go and look for an ATM and withdraw cash. I can ask someone to transfer the money and then they transfer some money back. So it's like peer to peer transfers is going to be implemented in the nearest future possible. Then we're going to have our own blockchain, which will take also two, three months tops. Then we'll launch our security tokens and utility tokens on our blockchain. Then we'll have active development of a uh, network of partners with the SheCard system. We're going to connect uh, entrepreneurs into our system, which will readily accept our unit for payment. And then we'll have the security token market launch. At which exchange? I showed you before that some platforms that trade in STO issued tokens, quite probably we will consider two exchanges at once. For Russian speakers, we will consider the capacity of the Belarusian exchange, but we have some data that Kami in, is in flown quite easily to Belarus, but with some challenges to outflow it back. So therefore, if you have large packages, you'd better not trade in the Belarusian exchange because you will have to pay taxes because immediately the Belarusian exchange uh, share the information with the Russian federal tax authority or one of the largest platforms where STO issued tokens are traded. This is securitized, but if we take the approach through Switzerland or Russia, uh, through Switzerland or Germany, it will be the European platform. It not be the Binance because token securities may not be traded there. Otherwise they're not listed because otherwise they will be regulated by the regulator subject to a license like the stock exchange. They will not it won't be the cryptocurrency exchange like CRU token, but they will be those exchanges that trade in digital currencies. And late this month, we plan our own exchange, launch our own uh, platform to trade token security tokens because we will have different 
things for basalt, for gold. So the whole year 20 of 20, it will be the year of abnormal, unbelievable news. And I believe that the popularity of our security token in the network on the web will increase, improve with each stage. Well, Leonid is asking a question about nodes. How much they will cost? What will be mined? World crew or points? Dear friends, you will learn about this. There will be nodes. You will have the right to delegate your tokens. Alexei says it correctly that there are nodes free. Why should we pay? Why are they paid? So free nodes, this is a different story. Well, when you say that nodes are free, it is called a delegated crew for stake when the owner of tokens either keep it in the wallets or donate their tokens to nodes to those who have the devices, the uh, machines, these boxes. If a person has no PC, but he wants to get a reward as a validator, then he will select what to get better, either a PC who will be continuously 24-7 operational and there is a risk of overheating because the the video card should be cooled and there is a ventilator which need to be, needs to be cooled and there is another device with no ventilator it shouldn't be cooled uh, so this is uh, the option for an old lady she buys this device uh, plug it in into the soccer and on the screen she will see her mining or validating. So this is a voluntary decision of any person. No one forces you to buy anything. If you do not feel pity with your PC at home and you are ready to consume enormously the power, the electricity and all these dashboards and it is functional 24 seven because you will never turn it off. This is your choice. So there will be a wide, chop, uh, wide choice and uh, different options will be available. Hopefully, Alexei, I managed to answer your question. Yes, you did. Thank you. Well, there will be at stage eight exchange between crew and unit and uh, other way around. So not mandatorily all these stages because these stages may have some intermediary sub stages as soon as we validate our assets and go to the exchange for STO then in parallel we can submit an application for IPO we will be screened there is such a procedure we will be in line for screening there is a procedure when a company is registered in Nasdaq exchange, but they have nothing to submit, no balance sheets, no good records, no good history, but Nasdaq simply puts the company in a register. And there is uh, such a phrase as the time of maturity of the company. And if we submit an application by the date of our anniversary, then the time of the maturity of our company will be three years after. So three years after, they may due diligence our history and will release us for the trading in listi listing in exchange. But we will have a good history by that time with blockchain, with all our users, with all the transactions. Gradually, we will capture the world. Well, I want to wish you, actually, the date is not correct, December 2018, when a new uh, Lexus RX 200T cost me only three Bitcoins. 
there were such excellent times. And I believe that Bitcoin today is a great chance for everyone to realize all our ambitious goals and dreams. And I am thankful to the participants of the initiative of the activist group who actually continuously send me some updated information because one person may not, may not capture everything and we have a large group of activists and people, different developers send me a lot of data and information and therefore we work almost 25 hours a day and therefore dear friends, if you have any questions in the tag questions, I see one more question. Which cold wallet for cryptocurrencies should I buy and how to use it? Well, a cold wallet is the one which is not connected to internet. It is on your PC, on your smartphone. This is a small USD card like memory stick and generally the um, wallets are Legendana purchased from France, but actually we found out one vulnerability of these wallets or weakness of these wallets. As soon as you get this Legendana wallet, you open a box and you see that the guidelines has some secret code, which later on can restore the access to your wallet. And we see that if these words are typed by anyone, it means that they could be stored somewhere. If everything is done appropriately, then the production of this memory stick should be done. It should be produced in one place, but the guidelines should be uh, printed in another place. Well, personally, after seeing this paper, I don't use this wallet. It is still in the box on the shelf. I Yes, I have some investments, small investments in the cryptocurrency and PayPay uh, wallet for Bitcoin. Well, there is another question I see. A second, please. Where is the question? Sorry, yes, she said Legendana. Yes, my slides were in English although they were translated into Russian by using Google Translate and they were in a hurry and please neglect mistakes and errors. Alexander is asking whether it will be possible in May, December to buy 1% of crypto units at the exchange. Well, actually this is our intention, but We'd better not hurry. Nadezhda is asking, which wallet is to be used to store cryptocurrency? Well, you know, the English letter C copay, but unfortunately it is available only for a Apple phones and not PCs. So there is BitPay and Copay. Yes, actually guys, you got it correctly. So the lady who is delivering the webinar is different. For other tokens, I had a wallet, Jax. This is Jax, orange image. Because this wallet also has some words, you need to take note somewhere, Jax wallets, yes. in order to restore access to your crypto assets. The wallets you use to log in as your email address, you use these logins as email address and password. So actually you should not do it because 
hackers may easily hack it. So quite probably they have some access to some exchange and logins. So actually they can purchase a SIM card with your number and texts are received by them. They may get easily access to your email address and uh, the confirmation of codes are sent to your emails and they can actually validate in the exchange. Therefore, wallets created on a phone should the secret phrase, the secret code on your device, on the server of the company, you shouldn't have these words. Yes, Maxim tells me that Ledger wallet is quite appropriate. Coinbase is not actually a wallet. This is a mini exchange in your pocket. This is a derivative of the US exchange. So your cryptocurrency is not there actually. When I show to the people, as the observer of Bitcoin or Ethereum that they have something in the wallet and they don't indicate, indicate their address, Bitcoin wallet, for instance. Look, I have five Bitcoins, but when this Bitcoin address is put into the observer, this observer is called BTAPS and there is zero. You can actually imagine the faces of the people. How could it be? Because here I have five Bitcoins, but this Coinbase, these are only the reflection of the statistics. Your Bitcoins are traded somewhere. How can you check that your wallet is not actually hot. So do not write anything about platinum coin. So there, the number of coupe, there, the number of uh, bitcoins actually reflects the reality. No one stole bitcoins there. If you use any wallet, I don't know about all the wallets because there are thousands of them in the world. You take the address of your storage of Bitcoin or Ethereum and put it into the observer. And you see, if there is zero, then your wallet is not cold, but hot. The owner of the wallet actually taken your Bitcoins for trading and will uh, give it back as soon as you receive a button sent. And there is a difference, always a large difference when people send Bitcoin uh, from Info and but I do it from Coupe. Yes, there is some confirmation uh, of the network for Bitcoin. It could be up to 30 uh, minutes, but today is not the December of 2017 and the load on the networks is not large and Bitcoin is sent very fast. But in case of uh, Binance is exchange, when you want to withdraw it, why it is so slow? Not because of having no money, but it needs to save up uh, on the commissions. It gets all the applications and through one transaction, a register or a ledger of the uh, transactions, but the commission will be uh, paid only once. If you have the root uh, ceiling, is downloaded actually you can send bitcoins to 10 of your friends but the commission will be paid as if you made only one transaction therefore exchange can calculate money well it accumulates thousands of uh, applications a day and then send them out well i see another question you they said that we will be able to sell 5% of the total number of crypto units in the nearest time. Well, guys, we decided that it will be only 1% because we need to test everything. If everything goes smoothly and all these transactions
are affected appropriately and nothing is lost. And again, this is for your security and safety. Some may have some large packages, particularly those who made their purchase at early stages. They may have several millions of crypto units. And if they send to us 5%, this is in a large amount, or if something is trapped or lost, or he forgets his password. So we need to do everything gradually, step by step. So if, if everything goes smoothly, we will expand this. We will not limit and restrict you. I know nothing about Virex wallet. I've never used it. Well, again, I repeat, you can check its reliability by taking the number of your address, blockchain address of Bitcoins or Ethereum's, the observer, or blockchain in four, you put your wallet there and it will show your balance. And if the balance in the observer does not meet what you have in IREX wallet, then you need to take everything away from there immediately. You can actually test any wallet, whether it is cold or not. If it is cold, then the cryptocurrency is stored in the address you got. You got the address for Bitcoin and Ethereum. You have this uh, address. And even if you're from your back office, you withdrew some income in Bitcoin, you got this address. You can check this address. And if there is uh, zero, but in your wallet, you see a figure, it means that your wallet is not cold, but a hot one. And it means that the creator of this wallet actually manages your Bitcoin and shows the statistics only. Yes, when you request the withdrawal, the person you would like to transfer it uh, he will receive this Bitcoin, not from your address, but from uh, um, other person's address, from other address. Well, Maxim is my aide. Btabs, btabs.com, if I'm not mistaken. Btabs.com. In Belarus, actually, you are quite lucky. The Belarusian exchange, you can inflow your exchange account by using Visa, MasterCard with the Belarusian rubles with no commission to be paid. Commission makes up zero and buy Bitcoins at this Belarusian exchange. I don't recommend to store them in the exchange, but in order to make uh, a wallet. So if you have iPhone, I recommend Coupay. Coupay, here it is. Do you see it? This C, let us see. Coupay. So you go to App Store and look for Coupay. Cool pay, yeah? okay. And you can select the Russian language. Then they'll tell you, make sure that nobody's watching you. Uh, then prepare a piece of paper and a pen. And there will be 12 or 18 English words. And you need to put down those English words in the order that they appear. Then the same application will ask you. The words will be distributed chaotically. And then the application will ask you, let's check if you put down the words correctly. And then you put the correct order and the, your wallet will be created. And then you need to keep that piece of paper in a very secure place because you don't need, you shouldn't forget where you put it. Guys, I've been such a long time user of iPhone that I don't even know what to tell you about Android. Let's see. 
there is a cool pay for iPhone and BitPay for 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 all the rest. Although Maria says it's copay, it's maybe copay and not copay. I don't know. Well, and then it's there is also a BitPay as well. Yeah, copay, not cool pay. Mm. Yeah, that's Maria spelled it as C O P A Y, C O P A Y. Then another thing is like Ether Wallet is the most hole, is the thing with the most holes in it. So many people are lost. Uh, it's my easy wallet. Though so many people who lost their money with the Miser Wallet. It's the most glitchy and bugged thing ever. If you have anything there, take it all away and put it anywhere else. Even in Binance, let it be there, but not in this wallet, okay? So hopefully, this is it for today. Another thing, Trust Wallet. No, guys. No, 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 no. It's a no. Trust Wallet is literally a nightmare. Where did you came up, come up with those wallets? Come on. They can show you the crediting of cryptocurrency to your wallet. But if you try to send something to someone, you won't be able to. And... Uh, Sometimes cryptocurrency just disappears from your wallet. Trust wallet is a no-no. It's like taboo. There a lot of frauds, cases of fraud were with trust wallet. A lot of work is being done with UGP Bank as well. The programmers are working. It's a um, separate topic, but I do not attend those meetings. But I know that the work is being done by the programmers to create. Well, the personal account, the back office, let's say, has been already developed, the wallet. And now we are, they are looking for the verifier for UGP. They are deciding who is going to do the verification because it's licensed activity. When there will be um, money from Sushi Master, credit is as profit bonus. Well, we need to wait at least five months for the payback period. We need the initial investments to ensure that the payback is uh, received. And only then we'll have uh, net income. And uh, part of that income will be credited to your accounts as a profit bonus. So we need to wait. It was just opened recently. So guys, I think uh, we should call it a day. Another question is why Ethereum not Bitcoin? I guess you missed the beginning of the webinar, right? Because not one project with security tokens was launched on Bitcoin. It is a slow network with uh, expensive transactions and the consensus uh, protocol, proof of work, is the mining equipment, its dependence on uh, miners. Proof of work is, was not even considered as an option. Well, friends, thank you everyone. And till we meet again, all of you guys who have some interesting information, some statistics, send it to me and I will share with the rest of you guys. Okay? See you next time. I'm going to switch off. Hopefully the interpreters will follow suit. Bye-bye.